Hello everyone and welcome back to our RTS series. In the last episode we managed to get our AI to attack a tree and knock it down. What we haven't done yet is them actually collecting the wood and taking it back to their base. So for this I've imported in an asset I've just grabbed off Google, uh, a little wood icon, a uh, very simple thing and a link to that is in the description below so if you want to use the same one you're more than welcome to. So we're going to have it above the enemy's head or on the screen somewhere to indicate that they've picked up some wood. So to actually do that first of all though we need to have something on them uh, a variable to determine how much wood they actually hold so if i go to the unit here and we're going to go and create a new unit base for this so create child blueprint cl uh, class and we can call this one unit worker uh, so rather than using these soldiers we'll make it work with just the workers we're going there we're going to change their mesh do the worker and that'll do and let's change it to worker B no, worker B worker A there we go and file so there is our worker and as I said we're going to make them go do their work over the uh, when we select them so let's drag them out into the world here and hit play Place this that's our two workers and they should go over here and they should still play the animation because they use the same skeleton so they work just fine knocking down this tree so every time they apply damage to this tree successfully they're going to collect some wood so this is all happening on our collect resource task that we made in the last episode on here you have the applied damage happening and setting the finish execute up as well so what we're going to do here is at the start of execute AI, we're going to get reference to the pawn that we are currently controlling because we need to get reference to them to set up and give them values. So controlled pawn here, we're going to cast to unit base. And we're going to go to the unit base here. And we'll go to unit base and give it the variables of uh, wood carrying and that would be an integer and hit compile uh, go back to our collect resource and we can now access that variable from here but what I'm going to do instead of doing it on the execute I'm going to promote the unit base as a variable uh, so that on the tick here I can just recall that reference out again and get their wood they are carrying so I'm going to get the wood they're currently carrying and I'm going to add to it. I'm going to add a integer and I'm going to add one to it. And then I'm going to set it back to wood carrying. So set wood carrying. Okay, and that goes there. So next, compile and save that. So next, what we're going to do is go to our UI folder. And we're going to make a little widget that appears above their head to indicate that they have got some wood. So we're going to use your interface widget blueprint, and this would be a worker uh, unit frame. And open this up. And it's very simple. It's going to be that picture of that wood and a number next to it. I'm going to get rid of the canvas panel, and we're going to put in a size box. Actually, not a size box. We'll just put in a text uh, image not an image sorry, a horizontal box because they're going to be horizontally stacked so then an image and finally some text so the image here is going to be the wood image so let's go down to the brush settings and choose our wood icon from our list there it is and I'll tell it to it as desired for now so you can see what it's going to look like uh i'm going to change the size of this so it's going to be 64 by 64 and the text here is going to be the name of the text is going to be number of wood or uh wood number we'll call it no, wood number text and you want that to be variable because it's changing in the game i'm going to vertically center it like so and I'm going to make sure it's set to the left hand side 
alignment. Okay, so that text there is pretty simple. We're going to go into compile that and go to the graph. So on our widget graph here, we're going to get the uh, new variable in here, and this will be number to display, and we're going to change that to an integer. On the construct here, we're going to drag out wood number text. And do set text. Plug it into a construct. And the number to display will go into the in text. So compile and save that. At the moment, number to display is going to be default into zero. So we should just see zero above each worker's head. So let's go into our worker. And we're going to go to open full blueprint editor, add a component to widget, and we'll call it unit frame. And this guy's unit frame will have on the right hand side the widget class that we can select from the drop down. So just move from there, worker unit frame is all a bit too big. So I'm going to change the draw size of this, I'm going to draw at desired size. And that should be okay. I'm going to just position it above their head, and then I'm going to tell it to be uh, set to uh, the screen space here. Just realize my character model is facing the wrong way. Turn it around. Okay. okay, so that would do there. Let's have a look at that in game, and we should see it above their heads. There is a little wood icon and number zero. And I can move them around. So, so I may actually move it further away from them. So let's go to unit frame and move it slightly above them. So let's see where that sits there. A little bit better. Okay. So with that in mind, we now need to tell that to widget to update based on the number of wood that it actually collected. So uh, on our unit worker, we need to get a reference to their unit frame. So what I'm actually going to do is actually put the unit frame on the unit base uh, in hindsight. I should have done that at the start because we can also use unit frame widgets to do things like health bars and things like that for other characters inside our army. So I'm going to redo that and put that on the unit base. Go on here, add widget, and unit, unit frame. And for just demonstration purposes, I'm going to change it over to my worker unit frame. Draw the desired size, position it up there. We should rotate the right way as well. And I'm going to push that back a little bit and take it to render in the screen space. Uh, now I've done that, I can get rid of the widget class on the, this template one on the character. The unit base is done. We go back to unit worker. We now have got two unit frames. We've got the one that's inherited and the one we just added at the start. Let's get rid of the one we added. So now our widget should be for our characters here. Oh, apologies, I did not actually enter it. Let's go back to that unit frame and change the widget class to our worker unit frame. Okay, so there's our unit frame all working, no problem. And say so our skeleton soldiers here could also use it for their health bars and so forth. So this unit frame we need to update. Now on the unit base here, on begin play, we're going to drag out the unit frame from there, get the widget, uh, user widget object. Now get the actual widget that is assigned to that component. From there, we can cast to our, actually no, I won't cast to anything, I'll just leave it like that. Um, from there, we're going to promote that to variable and call that unit frame. Uh, unit frame. And plug that in thing here. Okay, so that's on the 
begin play of our unit base. Go back to unit worker and we now have access to that variable, that reference. So on begin play here, we're going to right click and type in unit frame widget. And from there, we're going to cast to our worker unit frame. That in mind, we're going to drag that out and promote that to variable as my unit frame. So back on our unit base, we're going to create a new function, and this function is going to be called update unit frame. And we're going to leave it like that and hit save. Then go back to my unit worker and we go to the functions and go to override. And now we should find our update unit frame as one of the options. So we're going to click on that. And in here we can define what it's going to do. So we currently have a reference to our unit frame. So we can get unit frame widget. And um, when I call this function, I'm going to drag this out and we are going to cast to the specific one on our worker. And on here, we're going to then tell this to update. So I'm going to go back to my widget. Uh, where is it? There it is. And on our construct, we're going to add another custom event to this and call it to be update frame. Plug that in to set text and it'll redo the same code. But then we're going to go back to our unit worker and their update unit frame function and you should see now that input arrive on our update frame so i'm just going to right click here and get wood carrying and plug that in there hit compile and save that now let's go back to our collect resource task now the reason why we put the function on unit base rather than unit worker was because now we can use that function for all of our units no matter what one they are and each one's just going to define it differently. So in our case here, we're using, you can see the unit base reference. So on the tick, after we add the wood carrying together, we're going to go add unit base variable. That'll get reference to the unit that we're currently using here. And we're going to call the update unit frame function. We compile and save that. Now let's test that out. I've placed the building the workers and they'll send the workers to the tree we should see them pick up some wood so we've got two two three three four four five five and that's correct we should have five each because it has ten life we took 1.1 away from each life so ten pieces of wood so next we want to automatically decide to go back to our unit base so let's get that in there and we're finished So to do that, we're going to go to our unit behavior tree. And at the moment, we're doing a simple parallel to collect the resource and play the animation. We're going to move this to the side. And here we're going to do a find and move to the unit base. So we're going to go to new task, create new to, uh, new task for BT task blueprint base. And I'm going to rename it to find base location. We're going to Go into there, and on here we're going to go to functions override and choose the receive execute AI, and then we're going to right click and get actor of class, and we're going to tell it to find the base. So unit, and we're going to choose unit building base, and that's the first thing we build here. This uh, unit, oh sorry, capital building. We want to do capital building. So let's change that to unit capital building. There you go. So that's going to get the actor that of the building in the world. And we want to check if that's valid. So it is valid. Now, if it is valid, we're going to tell it to move towards that location. So we're going to use the AI move to node. And the target actor we're going to use is this return value. So drag that down to return value and to the target actor, sorry, there. The pawn we're going to be moving is this controlled pawn. So I'm going to drag that to our AI move to. And let's just give this a bit of space. Spread things out a little bit. Okay, so when it's finished doing that on, on success, we want to take all the wood and give it to the game and to the building and the base. 
So for that, we need to have a game mode that has that. So let's go to our game mode. There it is. And we're going to add a variable in here to keep track of how much wood we've got. So we're going to go to new variable and do wood uh, inventory, we'll call it. And that'll be an integer. It's compile and we'll close that. Now we can get the game mode. Cast to our particular game mode, in this case the RTS game mode. Now go to on success. So it's finished, it will get hold of the game mode, and from there we can set wood inventory. And the wood inventory is going to be equal to the pawn's own inventory. So with this pawn here, we're going at start just to cast to our unit base class. And we're just going to promote that to a variable. Just like how we did it on the collect resource task. Then at the end here, we're going to drag out as base class. So and get wood they're carrying and plug that in. Once that's done, we're going to take from unit base again and do set wood carrying. And that should tell it to update it back to zero. Do that. So. And finally, we're going to tell it to update the unit frame. Get unit base, update unit frame. When it's finished doing all of this, we're going to tell it to finish execute. And tick success. Compile and save that task now. Go back to your behavior tree and drag from the collect resource tasks here and do the find base location. Now I'm going to handle the finding and moving up to that base as well as handing in the wood all on that one task. Hit save on there and what I'm going to do is on my uh, game mode, uh, if I can find it, what we're going to do is just take on a tick to print string the number of wood it has in its inventory. That way we can test how it is reacting live. I'm going to drag that in and like so. We can say zero at the start because that's what it starts off with, uh, but we'll see how it handles the rest of it. One quick bug I realized I made a mistake on the uh, find base location. Rather than setting it to the wood they're carrying, we need to add it to the current wood we have in our inventory. So from RTS game mode, get wood inventory and add that together to our wood carrying like so okay so let's test that out and see that working so when i hit play we're going to place the uh, building select our units here okay. and pick up the tree so they're going to attack the tree and gain wood so they're gaining one two three or five and the tree will die and they should automatically yep go back to their base hand it all in and you can see now the print string is saying 10 we've now got 10 wood on our character and there are our workers done so that will do it for this episode in the next episode we'll work on some ui stuff to get this 10 to not be a print string but rather a ui element on our screen here so join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can donate just $1 and get access to all of my content well before anyone else. Big thank you to all my patrons for their continued support as well as my YouTube members. If you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help out. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.